I'm Reverend Jim Trude, and I'm the rector here at St Matthew's Church. Lovely, lovely to meet you. And um, it's fine that I can actually include some of the footage that uh, I intend to do, which will be tasteful, I hope. And uh, We're yeah. very happy to share St Matthew's with as many people as possible. Fantastic, I appreciate that. Lovely meeting you. Nice Take care. You. Okay. This audio video is not for commercial gain. It is produced, however, to promote an educational and historical perspective of Walsall's history that follows a spiritual journey that embraces cultural diversity. You can listen to Judith and John, two or four church wardens, passionately providing invaluable insights into the history of Walsall's church on the hill. Cultural heritage has fascinated people for centuries. Cultural pride for me is about embracing each and everyone's culture. Wales happens to be my place of birth, and this short introduction is meant to express pride and humility above all else. My poetry briefly introduces you to the Walsall, Celtic and Anglo-Saxon history, swiftly progressing to the Manic period when steaming and smoking chimneys filled the air of a town boasting 100 trades. The Industrial Revolution provided wealth for investors and factory owners who exploited the influx of artisans seeking employment and relative security for themselves and families. Alongside this wealth was innate poverty and social ills. Many disadvantaged families during times of excessive hardship fell ill to disease and were grateful to the likes of Sister Dora and her associates for providing life-saving care during times of epidemics and industrial disasters. Although the focus of this tale is concerned with the history of the church on the hill, I am mindful that alongside other community organisations, it too has a major part in servicing the needs of Walsall's diverse multicultural community. We begin with Once Upon a Time, when Walsall was known as Walhall. In 5th century AD, pillaging Saxons invaded our shores, travelled to West Mercia, ravaged, killed our village folk, usurped indigenous Britons against primordial wills, fought against their colonialist foe, forced to seek refuge amidst Celtic hills. An inextricable connection was made. Wales was part of its home. Soothsayers may well have mingled, historical druids heath still prevails. Who knows for certain why? Atop of Church Hill those druids can still be seen, wandering through the landscape, their ghostly spirits drift along, the Celtic roots a lilting song, while how to Walsall they belong. Until that time the Celts did reign, yes Walsall known as Walhall, translated means a hollow or valley, Walsall wood, a nook or cranny. No longer a Celtic domain, today cultural diversity is its strength, and forever it will remain. Please. I'm Judith, I'm a church warden. I've been coming to the church for many years, but I've only been a warden since April. Lovely. So still new at the job. But enjoying it. Very much so. Lovely. Yes, I'm John. I'm, I'm another of the... Uh, we've got four, four church wardens here. Yes. We're unusual. Yeah. Most churches have two. We've got four. Is that because it's such a large building? It is because it's a large uh, church, and I think it's also a, you know, the historic church for mm. Walsall. So historically, there were two wardens for the, the town, for the borough, and two for what was called the foreign, which was the outer parts of Walsall. Okay. At one point, going right up as far mm. as Blockswitch, but wow. uh, obviously not, not in more recent times. What is the history of St. Matthew's? Are you able to just oh. concisely say when it was actually built? And John's the expert on this. <laughs> well, we don't have a, a date of foundation. We know that the church has been here for more than 800 years. Wow. Uh, so the first reference to uh, uh, Walsall Parish Church is from the year 1200. Uh, and uh, the church has been on this site for at least that period. As you say, with it being a prominent site, it's likely that it predates that by some period. The earliest part of the present church is the crypt, 
which is below the chancel at the east end, uh, and that dates from around about uh, 1150 to 1250, and has a true medieval feel mm. to it, doesn't it? Wow. But the, the name amazing. of the church dates from about 1820 when it was completely rebuilt. The chancel, the east end of the church, uh, dates from the 1460s. Did you have a gas explosion in Victorian times? We did, oh, indeed, yes. Really? Yes. A big calamity. What was that involved then? Is that well, a... I think at the time it was the church had gas lighting, uh, and I think they smelt gas during one of the, the services and uh, asked the... A lot of hot air. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think they asked the verger uh, to uh, investigate where the, the leak was coming from, and unfortunately he did that with a lighted candle, uh, and, and, as, people uh, do. as they do, and uh, there was a major explosion at the at the west end, just by the west door. Wow. Uh, and the church was badly damaged, some of the stained glass was damaged. More significantly, the verger was killed oh. uh, as, a, as, a, 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 as a result of the, uh, the explosion. Very tragic, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's really interesting, and I, uh, I really appreciate uh, you know, your contribution. Take care. Okay, thanks Pleasure a lot. to meet you. Yep. Thank you, you too. Very much. There is no doubt that Judith and John's enthusiasm inspired me to seek out even more information about this amazing church that has stood on Walsall's most prominent hill since the 13th century. It continues to overlook the four corners of its borough, in spite of the unquenching appetites of various commercial developers who are seemingly hell-bent on casting shadows over this ancient church. Thankfully, St Matthew's not only has the high moral ground, but it still towers over its commercial competitors. Although trying to capture unimpeded photographs of its architecture and beauty remains quite challenging. When I researched some of the previous photographs featuring Walsall's church on the hill, it was indeed noticeable that urbanisation and industrialisation brought with it a mixed bag of changes. Not all were welcome. Imagine, if you will, Walsall, post-Saxon reign. From the shadows of that era, a tiny Saxon village emerged, where people travelled through time, entertaining annual fairs, agricultural offerings, demographically changed its airs. Fast forward centuries or more, the emergence of industrialization, a wealthy commodity of combustible coal, submerged beneath a midland scene, brought wealth to Walsall shores, black gold, a landowner's dream. The smithy in his workshop, paddling his bellows and thrusting his armor, a battle he fought each minute of each hour, refusing to accede to emerging steam power. Industrial demands, the artisan's nightmare, ferrous ironworks towered the horizons, smoke and smog littered the air, the smithy diversified his ironware. A miracle amidst the toxic smoke, St. Matthew's pulcrudinous spire loomed above the noxious fire, the tower clog ticked away, the social landscape still here today. Many untold mysteries St. Matthew's withholds. Esoteric medieval tales it conspires not to tell. Ne'er take its face for granted, its pointy nose and clock-like face, the cobblestone, the painted glass like woven lace, it shines upon the hill. A beacon of hope during times of ill, a source of comfort and joy, all-encompassing. A beacon of hope, St. Matthew's, the church that sits on the hill. Purposes. We're very happy to share St Matthew's with as many people as possible. Fantastic. I appreciate that. Lovely meeting you. Take nice care. Okay.